Hey YouTube, Psionic Kevin here, and I just want to talk to you guys today about three major issues with Valorant that needs to be fixed. This includes the broken rank system, the lack of a streamer mode, and major server issues that make the game unplayable at a competitive level. One major issue with the rank system right now is how that it has dynamic queue. Now if you don't know what that is, it basically means that no matter what party size you're playing with, whether you're playing alone like solo queue or duo queue with another person, you will have a chance of matching up in games against a five stack. What this means is that the team of five that you're playing against or vice versa, if you're playing in a five stack matching into other parties of smaller sizes is that you or the other team will have significantly more coordination. And in such a team based game as Valorant compared to more easily carryable games as a solo player like Counter-Strike, this makes the balancing of teams completely uneven. The longer the rank system stays this way with dynamic queue, the longer we'll have rank inflation and also boosting. This means that over time rank will progressively get worse. If you want to make an eye to eye comparison between Counter-Strike and Valorant, the difference is that in Counter-Strike, all five players can individually carry a game since you can buy utilities such as a molly, a smoke, a flash, and a nade so you're not limited on utility. In theory, that would mean you would have 5 smokes, 10 flashbangs, 5 mollies, and 5 HG grenades. However, in Valorant, since certain utility are specified to certain agents, you're very limited to the utility you have per round. And so in a typical game with a good team comp, you probably have maybe at most 5 smokes per round, 3 to 4 flashes, and maybe a molly or 2 to work with. Also, another side note is how unrated MMR factors into your placement matches for ranked. There's undeniable evidence that your unrated performance 100% contributes to the placement matches and the results that you get. Now, even if you place at a lower rank like Plat, it's inevitable that you will run into five stacks. And this ultimately means that you're going to have those one-sided games just because that little sliver of coordination is all the five stack needs to get the edge on money rounds. It's kind of weird because Riot has the whole solo duo and flex queue system where they have two separate ladders for League of Legends, but they seem to not want to do it with Valorant. Personally, I think that's the most straightforward fix to this issue right now with dynamic queue. Now, if you're a streamer who plays a lot of FPS games and ranked especially, you've probably experienced stream sniping to a certain extent. And it's very common to have stream snipers in 5v5 tactical shooters. When I first started streaming, I played a lot of Counter-Strike matchmaking, just kind of messing around. And it was crazy the amount of stream snipers that I would have on a game to game basis. It's really obvious to tell when these people find your stream and start playing off of the information that they're able to gather. And this is why streamer mode is really important. Now it's important to clarify that there are two types of streamer modes, a client side streamer mode and a server side streamer mode. A client side streamer mode is the more popular one, probably because it's the easiest one to implement. And it's basically a toggle option where if you turn this thing on, on your side of the screen, you will have your name change to something that's non-recognizable and everyone else's both on your team and on the other team will have their names changed to, for example, the color in CS, so uh, enemy green, enemy purple, or in Valorant's case, you could probably do like enemy sage, enemy rays, etc. Now the issue with the, the client side streamer mode is that people who aren't playing with streamer mode on will still see your name. And so it kind of defeats the whole purpose of having streamer mode. And this was the specific issue with Apex Legends streamer mode, where it was all client-sided. So people who were playing with streamer mode off would still be able to find these content creators and pro players and kind of grief their games and make their, their time on stream miserable. Now, the server-side implementation of this streamer mode would involve changing everyone's names so that if, say, the person who wants streamer mode on turns it on, then basically their name and their client would all have the names changed for both teammates and enemies. And for everyone else on the server, they would see that person who has streamer mode enabled as, for example, enemy sage or teammate sage. This is going to be trickier for Riot to set up and implement properly. But if done correctly, this can solve a lot of issues with stream sniping. And it will make it so that 
streamers and competitive players don't have to stream with a map cover so we can do actual live content and VOD reviews. And also we won't have to add a delay to the stream so we can engage with our audience. I guess it's kind of human nature to want to win, but at the same time, it's insane the amount of stream snipers that I've personally documented that have pulled open my stream in an unrated match to try to win the game. I did an experiment in beta where I would play on one account, specifically on stream, and one under a different Elias off stream. And since I got stream sniped a lot, and I also messed around with my friends on stream, obviously my placements were much lower, and I peaked that live stream account on Diamond 3. On the second account that I didn't live stream, I played a lot of solo queue, except for two of the placement games where I did duo queue, I believe. And basically off of my unrated MMR from solo queuing and those placement games, I placed Immortal 1 and I peaked that account in Immortal 2. Last but not least, we also have the server issues that have been occurring a lot worse these past few weeks. Valorant is a game that's optimized for sub 30 ping and a good connection to the servers for players to play at the highest level. And because of that, it's kind of necessary to have a option that lets us set a max ping to the games that we want to play. For example, since there's way more East Coast and Central based servers, I usually get 90 plus ping connecting to East and anywhere between 60 and 90 connecting to Central. Now, if I don't want to play at these high of a ping, I should be able to opt out of the, the specific ping range and make sure that the games I connect to are below a certain threshold. Playing 90 ping to an East Coast server is not something that I personally want to do. Now for the West Coast servers that are much harder to get into and are very rare compared to the amount of time to get pushed on East Coast servers, I get 30 ping plus or minus five. Because of that, the games feel much crispier and it feels a lot better to play. But recently, the Riot servers have been laggy and it has been forcing the West Coast servers to give me anywhere between 60 ping to 90 ping along with packet loss spikes. Now, the packet loss spikes do vary from server to server on West Coast because sometimes it is worse than others. But regardless, this is an issue that needs to be fixed because... There are people such as me and other players who have been affected by this, and it forces us to not be able to play a proper game of Valorant. Now, the only Band-Aid fix so far that I've been recommended is to use a VPN such as Haste. And for my friend, it actually solved his problem with major packet loss spikes. Now, when you use a VPN like this to improve your routing to Riot servers, you may end up with slightly higher ping, but it stabilizes the connection enough so that the packet loss is removed entirely. And as a band-aid fix, this is honestly the best thing you can hope for because it makes the game at least playable just with higher ping. Anyways, I think everyone kind of knows that Riot should and will do better with the situation they just need to diagnose the issue but i just wanted to push out this issue so that people are aware of how bad it is on certain people's end if valorant's able to fix these three issues which honestly shouldn't take too much effort within the next month or two it will be in a much better state than it is currently it will give meaning to the rank system so people can be proud of actually achieving a certain rank in this game People streaming will have a much more enjoyable experience, especially if they're playing a ranked mode. And once these service issues are fixed, it will make the game operate the way it was intended to, and the overall experience for everyone will be better. These are just my two cents on the three major issues that Valorant should fix if they want people to care about their game and continue playing it into the future. If you've watched this video till the end, I appreciate you guys. You can follow me on the social links down below, and I'll see you guys in the next one.